Hi, we're going to take a look at a few common heat exchanger types that we might find in industry. The first one we're going to look at is known as a plate type heat exchanger. Okay, and so if we take a look at it, what this thing looks like is we have kind of a sort of a large frame that, that holds everything together. And then we've got all this metal that's inside all of these plates that are where we do all of our heat exchange. Okay, so this thing has uh, kind of a frame that it sits on. And then we have these bolts that hold together these two heavy steel plates and squeezes all of the heat exchange components together. Okay, so it's made up of a number of little metal plates. And we can see in this case, we have uh, four inlets or outlets. And uh, typically we would have one fluid that would either come in or out on one side and a second fluid that would have its inlets and outlets on the other side. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like if we start disassembling it. So if I disassemble it, I'm going to remove the bolts that are holding it together and then pull off the that large plate that's holding it together. And then what can come out are the plates. Let's take a look at what those plates look like. So the plates are thin metal plates. And what we have are four holes in each one. Okay, And typically a spot where they can be installed and held in place into the frame. So we have a, a little groove in this one that allows it to slide onto the onto the frame or that rail. Okay, and um, these fl plates are all the same. So they're all exactly the same stacked on top of each other. Okay. So if we looked at how this plate ex type heat exchanger may work, um, you know, maybe we had our two fluids that were uh, coming in. So maybe this is fluid A over here and fluid B that's coming in um, through the frame over here, and then it would be allowed to just kind of mix together and then work their way out. So we don't want those fluids to just mix. So in order to keep them separate, what we have are in between each plate, we have a little rubber gasket. And the, the gasket material provides separation for each of the flows. So for instance, if we kind of looked at, at how this guy would sit, um, he, he's going to sit on top so that the flow that comes out of this hole is able to fill over top of this plate. And this side keeps that hole sealed so we don't get fluid that moves from the right-hand side gets down to the bottom, and then it's able to collect in that hole. Over on this side, we have, uh, again, isolation of that system. Okay. If we look at what it looks like on the back, so on the back side of these plates, what we can see is that we have those gaskets, okay, and so there's one in between each plate. And in this case, the gasket alternates. So we start and we have this side that's able to flow. And on this side, we're able to flow then to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, and so on. And so we keep going back and forth where we have one fluid pathway, then the alternate, then the other, then the other. And what we can do is have lots and lots of space where we can transfer heat uh, continuously back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So this heat exchanger can have a large heat transfer surface in a fairly small volume. And we can see on this heat exchanger, you know, we've probably got, uh, I don't know, we got six plates here, uh, probably you know, another 20 or so here. So maybe we've got 20 or 25 plates all together that allow us to do all of that heat transfer. 
Um, good thing about this is that one, when we do put it together, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So we do have a fairly small footprint for this heat exchanger. Um, the other thing is that we can fully disassemble it. So if we have a leak in one of the gaskets, um, we can take this whole thing apart and replace them. We can clean this. So if it gets fouled on the inside, we can take those plates out and clean them or replace them. Um, as well, we can change the, the performance of this heat exchanger. So if we felt that we weren't getting enough heat exchange, we could simply add in a few more plates into the heat exchanger and it would increase the capabilities of that heat exchanger. Okay, so let's take a look at another type of heat exchanger. Okay, so here is a typical shell and tube style heat exchanger. Okay, it looks like essentially a almost like a piece of pipe right, with a few inlets and outlets. Um, we've got a few flanged connections on this one. Um, but, uh, you know, basically looks like sort of a, a small piece of pipe. Um, but this thing does a pretty important job in terms of heat exchange for us. And additionally, what we've got is a, uh, uh, the ability to have a, a few different configurations inside. So we'll take a look at what those configurations look like. Okay, so here's what it looks like inside, and that's similar to the diagram that we showed in class. So what we have is two different fluids. So we have this blue fluid. Um, it has an inlet over on this end. It makes its way through a series of tubes. So just to zoom in on what that looks like, you know, it's able to find pathways through a number of tubes and it follows those tubes through the, the, the main section of that heat exchanger. Okay. And in this one, what we have is a, an empty cavity where those tubes empty into. And then they find a tube to, to move back in. So all the fluid that's in here eventually returns back and makes its way back and then ultimately leaves through this exit. Okay, so we have two exits uh, or an inlet and an outlet on the same side. So this is what we would consider to be a two pass heat exchanger. So it moves all the way to one side and then it comes back. So a two pass uh, heat exchanger. We also have the other fluid that comes in. So we have the shell side, which has an inlet over here, and in, it exchanges its heat with the fluid that's in the tubes and then eventually leaves over here. Okay. In order to maximize the, the heat transfer, we have these baffles that are inside of the pathway, which mean that our shell uh, or the pathway through that shell is a much longer pathway and it moves over top of tubes several times before exiting. And that means that we can have a little bit better heat transfer rate through that system. Okay. There's lots and lots of different designs of, of shell and tube heat, heat exchangers, uh, lots of different internal designs. So let's take a look at another one. Okay, so this one looks the same as we had, um, same, same look on the outside. And so we can see that, yes, we probably have uh, one fluid that comes in or out here, which goes through the tubes section. And then we've got an inlet and an outlet uh, through the shell section and probably has, you know, the same, same baffle design inside. Um, let's take a look at this one and see what's a little bit different. So... The shell side looks the same. Uh, we've got baffles, we've got a pathway through. Um, we have our tube side over here looks the same. So we have an inlet and we have a cavity here that's isolated from the inlet to the outlet. So everything has to go through these tubes. 
Um, what's a little different about this one is that it is a YouTube design, so uh, it the flow will always stay within one tube, and that tube is then curled around and returns out at the tube side. So this is what we'd call a YouTube uh, type heat exchanger or, or shell and tube type heat exchanger, as opposed to the other one um, where we don't have that YouTube. Um, this would also be a two pass design, so it does come, you know, back and forth. And typically, a two pass design, you would have your inlets and outlets on the same side. If it was just a single pass design, uh, of course, you would start out at one side of that heat exchanger and it would make its way across to the other side uh, where you would have your your outlet if it was a single pass design uh, okay hope that helped uh, uh, understand a little bit of what you see inside of a uh, few of these heat exchangers <laughs>